Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Thanks for spending time with us today. I'm really happy to be with you and welcome to the Edwin Using Edwin to Support Success for All Learners session. Uh, we're really glad you've taken time to join us today. We'd like to start with a land acknowledgement. Nelson's head office is situated upon traditional territories of the Wendat, Anishinaabe Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of Scugog, Hiawatha First Nation, Alderville First Nation, and the Métis Nation. The treaty covering this area of land in Toronto, Ontario, is collectively known as the Williams Treaty of 1923. I wish to recognize the significant contributions of Indigenous peoples across this land. And the session today is being presented from Mi'kma'ki, which is Nova Scotia. We seek a new relationship with First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples, one based in honour and deep respect. Nelson remains steadfast in our commitment to taking action towards truth and reconciliation by telling the truth about Canada's history and supporting Indigenous peoples, families and communities through their healing journeys. So, welcome. We're really glad you're joining us today. Uh, my name is Elaine Melanson, and uh, we're really happy to be here today. Um, I'm here with my colleague, Glorianne Mills, and we are both members of the Edwin Classroom Success Team, and we are teachers in Nova Scotia as well. So it's a real pleasure for us to be here with you today. Now, we know that these one-hour sessions go by really quickly. So if, please don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, by email if you have any questions after the session. Also, um, please feel free to post any questions that you might have in, uh, well, in the chat, if you want to private chat with us. Um, Laurie and I will be taking turns presenting. And uh, so don't hesitate to, to connect with us in any way. And you can also uh, see their, uh, our email addresses on the, uh, on the, on the screen. So if you're here to see what Edwin's all about, but you don't currently have an Edwin account, we're gonna ask you to please contact your region's tech consultant or coordinator to organize that. So one of the great things about Edwin is that you have access to ongoing help and support beyond just this presentation. There's no need to remember everything from today. Help is available uh, beyond this. And that goes into help such as emailing us, um, uh, uh, actually diving into um, logging in and our help center and all once you're inside of Edwin. So again, if you're if you're new to Edwin today and you're just curious, please email us, please contact us. We'd be happy to give you a follow up and take some time just to talk to you about what uh, how you actually can access Edwin as well. So Laurie? There you go. Okay. So what is Edwin? We call Edwin a digital, digital learning ecosystem because it contains a lot of interrelated parts. Those parts include curriculum and resources, interactive tools, and curated content. What we want to do is tell you, though, what Edwin is not. It's not a learning management system. It's not your Google Classroom. It doesn't replace that. It's not a digital textbook where you'll find things laid out in chapters and, and page numbers and then you go in and you grab and download your textbook. That's, it's not those things. Edwin is all of your learning all in one place. It's, and it can be seamlessly used in conjunction with other tools and resources that you're already using like Google Classroom. So, so think of it this way. Google Classroom is your administrative portal and Edwin is your content and your interactive tools plugin. So they work seamlessly together, but one doesn't replace the other. They actually go hand in hand. So that's the great part about Edwin and, and, and the Google suite of, of, for education, and particularly Google Classroom. So one, we want to make sure that you understand sort of a little bit of what we are and a little bit of what we're, what we're not, because we know sometimes that gets um, a little, uh, sometimes misunderstood. So at this, at this juncture, I am going to pass uh, the microphone over to Lori and let her continue to talk to you a little bit about our overview uh, today and uh, what we we're hoping to present to you. Thank you so much, Elaine. Hi, everyone. As Elaine said, I'm Lori Mills, and I am a member of Edwin's Classroom Success Team as well, and I'm a teacher here in Nova Scotia. So uh, today we're looking at how Edwin uh, supports uh, success for their learners. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera just to, so that I'm not distracting. 
There we go. And please feel free to, if you have any questions at all, reach out to Elaine or I. I have our emails in the chat and uh, we're happy to take any questions that you might have. And if you have questions while we're going through this session, please go ahead and um, let us know in the chat and we're happy to answer those questions as we go. And there will be time at the end of the session for that as well. And if you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat and tell us where you're from, that's great as well. So let's get started. Uh, our session today is meant to be an overview of Edwin and how it supports learners, um, but not a how-to session. So if you're interested in more of the how-tos or uh, the functionality in Edwin or how, um, or just do the deeper dive into classroom related questions, please uh, reach out to Elaine or myself and we're happy to help you with that. Our emphasis today will be on the following three areas, and I have that on my screen right now. First, we'll look at how Edwin's technology tools engage students through effective instruction. Then we'll look at Edwin's ready-made resources that support literacy, numeracy, and social-emotional learning, and Elaine's going to go through that piece. And then last, lastly, we'll conclude by showing you examples of how Edwin weaves in diverse perspectives through all the subject areas. So let's go and dive right in to uh, how Edwin utilizes technology to engage students. When students use Edwin resources, they have access to a whole range of tools embedded in the Edwin ecosystem. And those uh, tools help to support their unique learning styles and abilities. And because these tools are embedded in Edwin, students can access as needed without requiring specialized settings, additional apps, or separate devices. And having that invisible access to these tools for all learners, not just the few, is a game changer when it comes to students feeling included in the classroom. Pre-pandemic, Elaine and I uh, had the honor of going into classrooms and launching Edwin face-to-face uh, -face with students. We do that now virtually, but when we did, one of the things that we love to do is just walk around as the students were working in Edwin to see what tools uh, they were using. And all students will use a tool when they need it, um, at, at whatever time that they need it. And because it's invisible um, and everybody's in the same platform, no one sticks out and everyone feels supported. So I think that's really important to say. Let me show you some of my favorite tools in Edwin that support students in their learning. Keeping in mind that we want to encourage students to use technology and tools to explore content and also to express their knowledge. So I'm going to hop over to my Edwin platform and I have it already set up here. Edwin is across Canada and it supports uh, learners in all of the provinces and all of our content is aligned to provincial curriculum. So I have set my Edwin library to Nova Scotia grades five, six and seven. And here in Nova Scotia, Edwin supports uh, curriculum all the way up to grade nine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a resource in Edwin so you can see what that looks like and I can highlight some of my favorite tools. So I'm going to do a search for environment because I know that the topic of environment is uh, runs through all of our grade levels here in Nova Scotia. So I put environment up in that keyword search. And I'm going to pull all of the resources that we have in Edwin that is aligned to the curriculum for the topic of environment. And you can see up here that I pulled 186 results. Uh, the resources are in the form of text, audio, video, and interactives as well. And down the side here, you can see that I'm pulling from grades five, English language arts, grades five, social studies, uh, French immersion, grade six, English language art, grade six, and so on and so forth, even into the grade seven. So I'm going to pick a resource here. I'm going to go to this one, NATO Gulimp, the environment and interconnectiveness. This is one of my favorite resources or one of my top ones because I love how it intertwines the idea of Mi'kmaq and NATO Gulimp, which is, um, is the, the way that uh, our Indigenous community looks at sustainability and the connectedness to the earth. So the resource, whenever we open it up in Edwin, it opens up here and we call this page the Edwin Reader. 
And the Edwin Reader has tools up here at the top that will help students engage with the content as they need it. And all of our resources open up in the reader. So whether it's a video, whether it's text-based, whether it's interactive, students will have access to these tools to help them engage with the content. And you can see that this resource has lovely pictures. There's information for them to read. There's also, if I scroll down, there's going to be some questions um, that students can answer. Here we go. And there's also an activity as well. So when students and teachers are in here, they do have some great tools that will help them engage with this. Uh, and one of the first ones I'm actually going to show you is for the educator tools. Uh, so this is for the educator. So an educator can click on the educator tools and they have supports that are going to help them be successful as instructors. So as a teacher, I can come in here and if this is a new topic that I haven't taught before, I'll be able to access a planning chart to help me lesson plan. There is a handout that goes with the activity in this resource that I can also give my students. But what I really like is I have an info button, which is going to tell me exactly what curriculum outcomes in Nova Scotia that this resource lines up with, is aligned to. So that's great for my lesson planning and will help me to be a successful teacher. But there's also notes. If I click on the notes, I get in these teal uh, colored tables, I get information that's just for me as an educator that's going to help me, you know, uh, to uh, just prepare for my lesson. It's going to give me some background on the science involved in this one. It's going to give me some hints to support all learners in my classroom. This one's talking about how to present the new terms of biotic and abiotic. Uh, and it's also going to give me any answers to any questions that are posed so I can get my sample answers as well. So that's a tech tool that's embedded right into Edwin that all teachers have access to when they open up a resource in Edwin. Also in the reader, we have uh, for the students, we have some great tools as well. So I'm going to highlight a few of them right here. The first at the very middle of the reader is the text to speech button students can click on that i won't do that right now but it will have the resource read for them if this were a video there is closed captions that can be turned on and turned off um, for students as well i have the ability to change the font size so it's easier uh, for me to read all over here on the right are some great tools as well. I have a related button so that students can do the deeper dive and find resources that are related to this. Or it could be a support resource so that if students want to um, work with this information, but in a different way, say with a video instead of text, they can go into related and find another type of resource that they can use to help with their learning. There's a notes function with all of our resource, whether it's a video, text, audio, students can reflect on their learning in the notes section, either by taking their own notes and thinking about questions that they may have as they're going through this. Uh, students can also answer questions here in the notes as well. So for instance, if I just scroll down to where there is some questions, students can highlight the question and they can copy it and then place it in their notes and then they can answer in their notes as well. Along the idea of highlighting, I'm just going to go up here and for science, there's lots of new words that students um, are exposed to. I'm a math and science teacher, so I lean towards that. But this is also something that would happen in any class where there are new words. Students can highlight a word that is new to them. They can copy it if they want into their notes. They can highlight it as a color. I'm going to highlight it pink and you can see that it's put directly into my notes so that I can start building a word bank uh, in my notes as I go along. If I highlight that and I click on the question mark, it's going to give me a definition of that word, which is really helpful, um, not only to um, uh, students where English is uh, another language for them, but also just for uh, learners who are, are learning new terminology. 
I can also have that word pronounced individually and I can hit that button as often as I want. And where students are wearing ear uh, earbuds, uh, no one has to know how many times they hit that button. Boy, I would have liked that when I was a student. Then once students have their notes, if they'd like to share that with their teacher, they can go in and they can save it to their Google Drive or save it to their device and then share that with uh, their teacher or with fellow students if they want. Another part of this, even though this is a, a, a science uh, resource, I just want to show you that when students are working in a math resource, they can click on the uh, the math tools and they can pull up math manipulatives to a go along with the math resource. I'm just going to click on fraction strips so you can see what that looks like. It pushes the resource over to the left, but I can expand it. So as a student is working along, if this were a math resource, they can model what's happening in the resource uh, in their math manipulative. And all of our manipulatives are embedded in the reader. You can see that there are um, pattern blocks, fraction strips, algebra tiles, we have spinners, we have the Desmos suite of tools as well. But when they're in here, not only can they manipulate the pieces, but they have the ability to annotate the map and add their own information. They can also screen capture that and download it to their desktop or they can save it into their notes. And when it saves into their notes, it saves that picture along with their notes as well. So the ability to engage with the resources um, and not just read it and, and, and then leave it, they can go in and start working and massaging the information and process it for themselves. Lastly, if they go into the self-check, there is a place to reflect on the outcomes of this resource and students can uh, rate themselves on how well they feel that they're getting to know this information. So for instance, for number one, I can ex uh, explain the concept of Netogulimk and relate it to the concept of interconnectedness with the environment. A student can rate themselves as green on these and maybe they are working on the last two. I'm not going to show you right now, but through the dashboard, teachers will be able to see those self checks for their whole class and individual students. And this is a great way for teachers to be able to see where students are having success and where students maybe need some more support in terms of the outcomes as well. So those are the, the reader tools that are embedded in Edwin that students can access as needed when needed um, within, within the Edwin reader. One last thing before I pass it over to Elaine is I just wanted to show you that along with those interactive tools that are embedded in the reader, we also have interactive resources. So along with the videos and the text-based resources um, and our audio, we've got some great interactive activities. Uh, here are the um, some of the categories of our interactives that you'll find in uh, in our resources and you'll find them in all of our subject areas. You'll find them in uh, socials, in science, math, English language arts, and we're building more of these as we go. So we've got a great start on these, but there are going to be lots more that come. We have self-paced tutorials. Uh, we have self-tests matching activities for drags and drops and labeling activities. We have uh, maps and timelines that are interactive that are clickable. Um, we have those embedded math tools and we have some great simulations as well. What I'd like to do is to show you some of my favorite ones. I'm just going to show you three because we don't have, I could do a whole nother session on all of our interactives. We have so many of them. The first one that I'm going to show you is uh, a math one. So I show, I'm show i opening up this one in the reader. It's called Exploring the Pythagorean Theorem. And uh, where I showed you in the reader before that we have these math tools available in the reader, this math tool is is an interactive tool that's embedded directly in the resource. And it's showing the relationship, the Pythagorean relationship, where if you take the square of A and there's that square of A and you add it to the square of B, you're going to get the square of the hypotenuse, which is C. And students can manipulate this interactive to show that absolutely 
If you add the square of A with the square of B, you'll get the square of C. So it's a great visual that will help students to understand that relationship and they can manipulate the variables directly inside the resource as well. So lots of engagement here, lots of chances to actually get their hands dirty and play with the resource. It's not just static. So that's one of my favorites. Another one that I'm going to show you is our FET Labs um, from the uh, Colorado University. We have a bunch of simulations that are in Edwin that students can play with. This one's great for grade six when we're talking about static electricity. It's called the John Travoltage simulation and students can play with the avatar here to create static electricity and then to have it flow from John into the metal um, doorknob so we can build up that electrical charge and if I build up enough of it it will discharge so a great way for students to uh, have some fun with some simulations they can use the notes to follow with the steps as well and the last one I'm going to show you is for social studies and this is from our French immersion library this is a, a, a map that students and teachers can annotate. So uh, teachers and students can mouse over the different provincial names and you can see that it's highlighted on the map. And we can also add uh, annotations so students can draw directly on the map and highlight pieces on the map as well. So just another great uh, interactive that students can use. I'm going to just copy out and put into the chat all of my favorite um oops maybe it's too long it won't work now but there are definitely lots more interactives that you can find in edwin and all you have to do to find them is uh go into your subject libraries and then click on the heading and you'll be able to find oh I, that one it didn't come up i'll do it for science let's see there we go open up your very first heading and then any interactives that are in your library are going to be found here and there's even more coming for September so with that I'm going to pass the baton on to Elaine Elaine I'm going to stop sharing my screen that's great Lori thank you for that I'm going to share my screen now special shout out to Lael nice to see you glad you're with us today so you should be able to share, see my screen now? There it is. I can see it. Is. Yeah, perfect. So I'm going to talk now about, uh, about looking at the libraries and collections in Edwin to support learning, but not just to support uh, learning in terms of a, a particular theme in science or in social studies or whatever, but to talk about the overview of literacy, numeracy, and of course, social emotional learning. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take you into my Edwin. There it is. And I too have my library set for grade five, six, and seven. And as we go through, I'm going to look a little bit about how you can actually see the a, a different library and how you can actually use those movement of libraries to do some differentiation. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go up on my homepage here. I'm going to do a very broad search of keyword. And that's simply literacy. So as I click on this uh, magnifying glass, you'll see what happens. I get 80 results in here. And as I move through that, and I look at some of the results I have, I see that 44 of them are videos, and three of them are interactives, which Lori just, just talked about. And I can easily filter those just simply by clicking on the, on the little box next to either video or next to interactive. But what I like about this is as I go through here, I see different types of resources. Anytime you see this black band here, that's one single resource. But if you see actually a blue band, that's actually a full collection. And you'll notice in here that these are broadly based. They're across that grade six to eight uh, band of, 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 uh, of grades. So that means I can use these and take pieces of them and perhaps use them uh, uh, in different ways for my different students. So as I look down through here, I'm gonna see a few themes uh, emerging. 
I see an awful lot in here about media literacy and also a focus on media. I also see in here getting an edge on, on media literacy. I see quite, a, quite a, an emphasis on that, which you will see, obviously, as Laurie showed you earlier, you see where those show up on the left-hand column there. But as I also look down, I can see in through here that uh, recurring types of, of themes or titles. I see in here focus on media and I see numerous pieces of that. So that tells me that this is actually an interrelated um, type of, of, of uh, uh, overarching theme, a focus on, li on literacy. Okay, and I'm a focus on media. I'm looking at that and saying that's that's critical in terms of my research skills that I want my students to learn, their ability to be able to go online, their ability to be able to look at different media and be able to evaluate them, whose point of view, uh, what promotional material is, is in there. So it's great to be able to look through those. And I also see another uh, theme here emerging, applying listening strategies. So if I wanted to narrow those down, I could easily take any one of these titles, applying media strategies, type it in up here, and it will actually narrow that down for me so that those are the ones that show up. So this is a great way for you to be able to find things quickly. So I really encourage you to take a, a, a look at these and sort of narrow things down a little bit. Look at what's recurring in here. Also, the thinking part about these about these critical media pieces, making an impression, critical literacy, I can see the links into my other subject areas. So this one, critical literacy part two, tells me there's a part one down here, developing scientific literacy. And we know that right across all of our all of our uh, our uh, broad um, areas of grades or grade levels, that that is a very 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 important way of uh, of having our students have that literacy piece in science, be able to research that critical thinking, that problem solving piece, that logical thinking piece. And these collections, teaching those students skills and competencies across grades and grade levels allows for review and reinforcement of skills from previous years and in the presentation of new skills in a logical and kind of continuously, uh, continuous manner. And also, since students can also access these resources, they can be uh, reviewing on their own. So you can take pieces of this, for example, I'm going to click on the scientific literacy. I'm going, when you do that, remember, it'll copy to your collections. And they can, you can look at these or you can have them take pieces of these and actually assign those out to different students or different groups in several ways. So that's a great part about this because it is that broad piece. And you can also, as you know, in Edwin, add your own uh, information and your own uh, documents into this. So these collections can be used in numer numerous ways to actually get at those very basic skills and competencies that we, we actually we need to focus on with our students. So that's, that's how I would look at literacy. I'm going to go back here to my home page. And I'm going to do a little bit uh, a little bit something different. If you search the word numeracy, there's not really much that comes up strictly because that's not a term that's used across Canada in all jurisdictions, but we certainly know that math is. So I'm going to go in here and I'm actually going to this time search something very specific and I'm going to put it in quotes and I'm going to search math games. And, and as you know, when you do any kind of a, a search, if you put it in quote marks, it's going to search the entire uh, the entire term and not search the words individually, math and the word games. That would give me a bit too much uh, broad uh, broad information that comes up. I really want to focus on math games, fun ways for my students uh, to learn some math or apply their skills. So I'm going to click on this, and here's what comes up. Oh, cool! So I see a whole bunch of uh, of, of uh, uh, resources that come up under that title of math games. So as I look through this, I can take a look and say, okay, there's Cartesian plane. What's this one about? Circles and probability, the skills you learn for drawing circle graphs to make spinner games. This is a great way for me to be able to use these as stations in my, if I'm in class, 
take those, have those stations set up, have students go around, be working on some of these games, make their own game, invent uh, a spinner game, uh, working with data. Again, this goes across all types of review and, and skills. So because this is broad, this does allow you to actually target how you're going to do that reinforcement with your students. So you're supporting and going back for that review. And you also can challenge students who might need a bit more in there. You also can take a really good look at the Edwin Library. So if I go down on the left hand side to the second icon over here, it says Edwin Collections. Sometimes we, we as teachers head to our subject area and that's all we do once we're in Edwin. But I do want to encourage you to take a broader look. Again, we're looking at looking for materials, libraries and collection that support all of our learners. So I'm going to up, go up here to my all collections tab, click on the arrow down, and I'm actually going to go down to math and you'll notice when you use it this way you'll see your subject area is broken out into different skills and again there's that broad range in here so i'm going to go down here and i'm going to go back to my math again and i see in here math general I'm going to click on that and i get a really nice potpourri of different types of math uh math resources and collections that are linked to different activities. And these are actually linked to what real life situations for students. So you can see Flag Day, um, the Mars Rover, Catch a Ball Game, an Hour of Code activity, my name logo, Pi Day, okay, another hour activity, the piano keyboard. But what I like here is this video collection in math. So I'm going to open that up and I just click on it, copy it to my collection. It will take a moment just to open up. Again, this is great for students to review concepts, to be able to go back on their own or in a guided way where you are having them in class and you're, you're presenting this, you're projecting this. Great, great way to review the concepts. So if you take some of these, there's fraction strips, there's outcomes, there's averages in here, there's your geometry, great, great activities. If you take these, and you combine them with the math tools, which Lori showed you earlier, that allows students to learn according to their own learning preferences. So they can take a look at some print materials, which we already sh showed you. They can take a look at a, a video, and they can actually go back, if you think of what I just did with math games, and do something that's hands-on. So that way you are getting giving students those choices of activities and allowing all of your students to be included in those activities at different in different means at different levels. So I love this particular this particular um, a collection. It's really really well done. A lot. It's most of it's from Twig Education, one of our partners, and they've done a. Ve it's very very clear for students. So you can also go back in and look in in uh, your the collections, and be more specific if you like. For example, down here in math again, I'm going to take a look at patterns in algebra, grade six to eight. And again, I can see all of the materials that are there that are broadly based that I can work with to meet the needs of my diverse learners in my classroom. Okay, so these are great that can be used to uh, differentiate your learning. But I do want to touch on, we talked about literacy, we talked about numeracy or math. I do want to touch on this, the very important piece of social emotional learning. We know that that is so important these days, especially as we move back into, a, into this hopefully post-pandemic world, you know, not only back to school in September, but back to school post-COVID. What will that look like? What will have changed? How will it be familiar and the same? But how will it also be different? It's going to be stressful for all of us, for us as teachers, it's going to be stressful for our students as well. So I'm going to go back to my Edwin library here. And I'm going to go down this time to, you'll see it, it's not, you won't find this broken out yet as a, as, a, as a subject area on your home page, but you'll go down here to physical and health education. And when I take a look at that, I have a series called Whole Me. Now, I actually have one of these open, and this is my Whole Me Stress 
toolbox. What I really like about this, it allows you to use SEL resources in the curriculum to support students' needs. There are ways in here of taking movement breaks, if the importance of healthy living are all in these, in these whole me collections. This one in particular helps you to really think about healthy ways to manage stress and helps our students as that. So as you get to know your students, uh, you'll know when and where to use the resources in the whole me collection. And it's a, this particular one is a great way to start off that new school year, as I said. It can be done as a whole class activity. You can ask uh, students to walk through this slide deck and do the activities that are in there. Uh, you can present it a piece at a time. It can be a unit, it can be assignment, or it can just be something that we that you decide to do as you're coming up, as you know, to a, a stressful event. Maybe it's that first test in September, um, that, that, that a, a big change for students. Maybe it's something that you want to look at right at the beginning of the school year or the first couple of days before you start to launch into, uh, into some of your, your actual subject area uh, work. So these are all great things that you can take a look at underneath this whole physical, edu physical and health education. Again, it, you won't find it listed as a subject area, but it's right here and wonderful uh, resources in here. Now, you might say to yourself, oh, that's, that's great, Elaine, if I knew that it was there and knew how to find it, knew how to search for it. So what, I, what I'm going to show you is simply some great keyword searches in Edwin. It will help you to find those broader collections. I just talked about whole me. We also have collections called take 10 that are meant to be short conversation uh, starters about a whole broad range of topics uh, that are usually current events in the news. If you're looking for, I'm sorry, if you're looking for uh, a, an activity, getting an edge on, getting an edge on math, getting an edge on re reading, getting an edge on whatever you like, it's right here. Type in your keyword search in, on your homepage, getting an edge on, hit that, uh, that magnifying glass and it'll give you the whole list of those you can look at. Also the word project in your keyword search on your homepage. Creating a, what is it you wanna create? See if it's in there or just type creating a and see what, what pops up. Type unit tasks in there. That's a great one to help you really see how to weave some of those in there and do that differentiation piece. Show me again is a great math, uh, a great math uh, collection or series of collections. Show me again, back to the basics. And you can direct students back there as you're, as you're pushing other students on. This is the versatility of Edwin. This is the inclusive piece of Edwin that's so important. And also focus on, you saw a few of those in there with the literacy ones I showed you, focus on media, focus on, again, what is it you're looking for? Put that word in there or just type in focus on and it'll bring you up all the collections that are available. So that's a really great piece to, uh, to uh, take a look at. But I do want to just move on a little bit. I mentioned differentiation a few moments ago. So let's explore a little bit how we can, as teachers, differentiate our instruction using Edwin, specifically how to use our Edwin libraries to access resources at different skill levels and entry points. We can consider this meeting our students where they're at in, in Edwin. So let me, let me show you what that looks like. So here I am in Edwin. I'm just going to go back to my home page here. Here I am in, Ed, in Edwin. So when you first sign into Edwin, you can configure your libraries according to your assigned grade levels and sometimes a specialty. I'm go, you do that by going down to the bottom on the left-hand side in the settings tool and clicking on manage library resources. You can see in here that I am in the Nova Scotia catalog and I've selected grade five, six, and seven. So easy enough. I usually, if I'm teaching grade six, I would teach, I would click on grade five, click on grade seven. I would take what we call those shoulder grades so that I can dig back into the material that is, came from the previous year. If I have a student that needs that extra support, or if I have a student that is actually sort of breezing through things and needs a bit of a challenge, I can look at what's up there in grade seven as well. So I can easily do that. So across those grade levels, let's say that I'm teaching environmental action as part of the grade seven science curriculum. 
And I know that that's a theme. Lori mentioned environment earlier. That's a theme we touch on in pretty well every grade level, but through different subject areas. So let's say grade seven is the grade I'm teaching. I'm going to take grade five off and I am going to click here on grade eight. So that's how I would reconfigure my library. You can only choose up to three grades. So again, if you're teaching grade six, I we highly recommend the grade below and the grade above to take a look at that. So I can, but, but if I have a class that I know struggles, I can decide to keep the grade five, six, and seven so that I'm really moving back to some basic material and also keeping the grade level that I teach. So that's how you can, how can, you can easily, easily do that. So I can actually pull from grade, from grade levels as well. When I actually do a keyword search, I'm actually going to click that off again and click the grade eight on. Remember to save if you're going to do that. It'll say, are you sure? You can proceed. Then as I go back to my home and I get use the word environment again, this time I've got grades six, seven, and eight. And I can again see what's in here and I can see where the grade levels are. I can look down if I'm teaching grade seven, pull from different grade levels. I can look back down grade levels for basic review and simpler formats, or I can reach up to the higher grade for deeper dives. And you can show your students this technique as well, because in Edwin, they actually have the autonomy to cur curate and save their own resources. Also in Edwin, you have the option to assign resources to whole classes, your whole class or to small groups or individuals by either using, and I'm going to click on this. Oh, sorry. I'll go back here. I'm going to open it up. I can either assign this by a link, a shareable link here, just this one piece. I can send that to a small group. I might ask another small, another small group or an individual that I know needs to see this more of a video instead of reading a long article. I can take this and actually show a video to it, send that link to a particular student or small group of students. All of these I can choose to do. And I can actually do that actually right straight here through my Google Classroom. So remember that, that you know, Edwin is kind of your plug into a Google, to your Google Classroom. So you can take advantage of Google Classroom's capacity to, by, to differentiate assignments by assigning to individual students or assigning to small groups of students. This is also great for, for stations, for learning stations. You can assign different students into different learning stations I mentioned earlier. But this is a great way for you to use your Google Classroom okay, to take one of these particular collections, open it up, and take some of those some of those resources that will pop up and actually simply show them and assign them or assign the whole collection. And of course, my computers, there it is. I can actually take this tiny tech in the environment, send the whole collection out, share the whole collection to all of my students in Google Classroom or share it again to a group. I want this group to work on this particular collection or send these out individually to different students and do that differentiation that way. So do take advantage of what of that ability that, that Edwin offers you through your Google Classroom. So next we're going to look at Edwin content that deepens understanding of diverse perspectives and Lori is going to be guiding you through that. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Thanks so much for that, Elaine. I'm just going to pull up my screen now. I love um, that Teachers and students have the ability to, you know, reach down or up uh, to be able to access those resources. Because one of the great things about the curriculum in Nova Scotia is that we revisit these themes of environment, sustainability, um, culture throughout the grade level. So it makes it super easy in Edwin to be able to go and get some of those prerequisite resources when we need them or reach up higher and, uh, and grab some of those deeper resources. So the last part of our presentation, time flies, um, we're looking at content that deepens understanding of diverse perspectives in Edwin. And Nova Scotia has a rich cultural fabric and Edwin continues to work to include content that connects learners to diverse backgrounds, diverse family structures and social and cultural identity. We are 
by no means have you know 100% achieved that, but it's one of our pillars here in Edwin to make sure that everyone feels represented uh, within Edwin and so that we can also learn from each other. Our uh, culturally responsive content is weaved into all subject areas and not just as standalone pieces. So whether we are in science or math, social studies, we're going to be able to see Nova Scotians reflected in that content from our Indigenous peoples to our Black people to our um, Acadians, uh, Gales, you're going to see that we weave those perspectives throughout the content in Nova Scotia. And because it's a digital resource, we can add more content uh, and we, we're adding to that uh, always. And uh, we can also be flexible as well in that if some things come up, um, for instance, uh, um, we if there's something that happens in the news, we can be very, very quick to um, respond to that in our content in Edwin through those featured collections that, uh, that Elaine was sharing with us. So what I'd like to do is just show you some of that content that's in here. As I said, it's weaved in through all the subject areas, but we do have uh, pre-made collections uh, that are made right here at Edwin that um, also will uh, give teachers a curated collection so they don't have to go and find it themselves. So it is uh, weaved throughout the subject areas, but if teachers are looking for um, something specific, they can go into Edwin Collections uh, and then they can, for instance, look for Indigenous and they're going to find um, pre-made collections on things like Orange Shirt Day, on National Indigenous History Month, Indigenous Peoples Days, uh, and so on and so forth. So those are curated collections there so that Teachers don't have to start from scratch. They can come in here, grab a collection uh, and, and work from that. But if I go back to my home screen, I can find those pieces threaded and weaved throughout our curriculum libraries. Let me show you. I'm gonna go into my keyword search and I'm going to put in Mi'kmaq and it's going to search my Nova Scotia libraries for content for Mi'kmaq and you can see that I'm coming up with some great results here. There are some for grades five, grade six, uh, grade seven science and uh, lots of videos and text available here all on Mi'kmaq perspective. We have it around ice hockey, sustainability, Native um, lots of different perspectives and different entry points within our subject areas. I can back out again and if I want to do throw the cast a bigger net I can put indigenous in and that's going to include all of our uh, Canadian indigenous peoples again I'm going to find lots of results 112 and again lots of different touch points within my grade levels and within my subject areas as well so interweaved with the curriculum outcomes. If I go back in and look for Black History, I'm going to have access. These blue ones are our uh, curated collections um, here, but I'm also going to find uh, other uh, resources as well uh, for Black History. And we are also working on uh, our LGBTQ uh, friends as well and we are just getting started on this but we do have content already building into Edwin for uh, our LGBTQ community. So we are working very, very hard um, to have all peoples represented and to not just have it siloed, that it's weaved through all of our curriculum. One of another key term if I put in anti-racism, I'm going to find uh, resources that help me um, include anti-racist uh, education inside of Edwin as well. So check those out. I always say uh, try and stump the keyword search uh, from our home screen. It's, it's a great way to find those interesting perspectives, unique perspectives that we can nurture in our classrooms in all of our subject areas.
One other thing um, about this is that we are a work in progress and, and I'm happy that we have this content, but we are working to have even more placed in here. But along with what Edwin is putting into the platform, students and teachers can put their voice into Edwin as well. We, um, we haven't talked a lot about the customization that um, we can do in here, but Edwin is customizable. So as students and teachers are curating information into their own personal collections, they can add their own voice. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go into my collections and students and teachers. This is where they can start saving collections from Edwin or creating their own. So I have uh, some already started on Native Gulimp. I've got some math collections that I've started as well. Um, some are ones uh, that were created by Edwin. So this one is writing algebraic expressions. This is a collection that was pre-made by Edwin, but the ones with the black bottoms are ones that I've made myself. So I can go into my Native Gulimp collection and open that up. And here I have saved resources from Edwin that have to do with NATO Gulimk. But along with this, I can go into add items as a student or as a teacher, and I can add my own resources. I can add a piece of artwork that I have created around the uh, perspective of NATO Gulimk, and I can add that into my collection. I can add a poem or an essay that I've written and add it into my collection. I can add a link to an external source. So if I have found a video that, um, that I really like that I wanna add into my collection, I can do that as well. So teachers and students aren't, um, are, uh, aren't uh, pigeonholed just with uh, all the content that we have in Edwin. They can add their own as well and build it in they can add their own notes into what we call the wrapper on this side and reflect on the resources that they're looking at and i already showed you in the reader notes that um, teachers can add their voice into the reader notes as well and it will always be connected to the resource that they have um, they have in there and once students have created their um, have created and curated their own collections they can share it with their peers by grabbing the shareable link, uh, or they can share it with their teachers. This is a great way to create a portfolio of learning to show all of the resources that they've looked at, including what they have made with that information and how they've processed it. So it's a great way to bring that student voice in. Okay, with that, that is uh, Edwin. Uh, look at how we can bring our own voice, our culture, our um, identity, um, and see it in Edwin and express it in Edwin as well. So we've gone over a lot, Elaine and I, in this hour, and we thank you for um, spending time with us today. Uh, and and uh, we hope that uh, we've shown you some things that perhaps you haven't seen before in Edwin. If you are, uh, if you have been using Edwin for a little while, and if you're a new user or if you're curious about it, I hope that we've inspired you to do the deeper dive into Edwin. At this time, I'm just going to bring us back to our uh, contact information for Elaine and I. Please feel free if you have any further questions or you want to do the deeper dive, just reach out to us. We are happy to answer any questions you may have and maybe you'd like to meet us through Google Meet for a chat. We're happy to do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and turn back on my camera. There we go. Thank you, Elaine, for spending this time with me today. Oh, there you are. Hi. <laughs> now, thank you so much, Lori. That was that was great. And um, Lael, thanks for being here, uh, sticking with us uh, during the session. And we want to say thank you to everyone for the opportunity to show you the the richness, the the flexibility, and the support that Edwin can offer all of our all of our learners. We're, we're, we are um, we're really happy to have that to have again have the opportunity today. So thank you for that. And thanks, Chris, too, and Ashley for being here. I can see you in the chat. And uh, have a great rest of the conference. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Elaine. Thank you, Laurie. Thanks.